Hello, my name is Dwayne Kimball, owner and founder of KMD89, VA Claims Consultant, Leave No Vet Behind, and also I'm a United States Army veteran. Today I'm bringing you another educational video as it pertains to the VA disability compensation claims process. And today I'm going to be discussing what are, or if any, are there updates on the proposed changes that the VA sent out at the end of February this year, a couple of months ago. But before we get into today's video, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and always share this video with your fellow veterans. And also, you can follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So today's video, what is the status of the proposed changes that the VA made back in February for tinnitus, sleep apnea, and the general rating criteria for the, all the mental diagnosis? So we all know that, uh, I want to say it was end of February. Yeah, it had to be in February 26th or 27th. The VA sent out proposed changes. I did a couple of videos on it, and I'll link those videos at the end of this particular video. But the VA left or made April 18th the deadline where veterans can submit comments as leave their thoughts and comments as pertains to these proposed changes. But they haven't implemented these changes. We don't know if they are going to implement them and or when. Now, another thing to keep in mind is if they do, if there should be some type of guidance in there that states on or after this particular date, all claims received for tinnitus, the respiratory uh, conditions to include sleep apnea and the general rating criteria for uh, the mental conditions, if claims for any of these conditions are received on or after this date, it falls under the new criteria. Should. That's what they've done in the past, but in the email and under the federal, in the federal register that um, they had linked to that back in February, it didn't state that example that I just gave you. Okay. So what can we do as veterans to make sure we stay up to date? I did another video where I was showing individuals how they could subscribe to get notified whenever the VA makes an M21 uh, reference manual change, because if they implement these, there's some things that they're going to have to change in the M21, in the 38 CFR. But what are some other things that you could be doing on a daily basis? Because I get those emails periodically, maybe two or three a week, where they say, hey, we made this change to this M21 that states this, or this M21 that states that. Now, that's not law. That's just the reference, okay? But you don't want to wait and find out by email. So what are one of the things that I think that you can do and that I've been doing, okay? So I'm going to share that with you today. So what I did was I thought about it and I said, hey, let me go out to the 38 CFR, Code of Federal Regulations, and I do this maybe three or four times a week and at least once on the weekend to see if these changes have been implemented. Because if they do, the diagnostic code criteria is going to have to change, okay? So how do I do that, all right? So I'm gonna, I got a couple of slides, two or three slides I'm gonna share with you, and then I'm gonna take you to the VA's website so you can see in the 38 CFR and how to look for yourself, okay? So that being said, First slide number one. Here in the first slide, you have the 38 CFR Book C Schedule of Rating Disability. So if you don't have this link saved in your favorites, you need to. And you can go to the VA's website. Uh, you can go to the VA's website and look for it, okay? 38 CFR Book, Book C Schedule for Rating Disabilities. And if you hear me talk about this in my other videos uh, or any of my educational training that I do, I call it the VA's rating scheduler. OK, so when you get here, you scroll down, you have a lot of um, uh, regulations here that are the beginning of each body system. You know, uh, muscatory organs of special sense, respiratory, cardiovascular, skin, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you want to keep scrolling down until you get to subpart B, the disabilities rating, okay? So the one for the muscatorial muscles is on the muscatorial. 
then you have organs of special sense. So we're going to go to the respiratory. Okay. So when you get to the respiratory, what you want to click on is 38 CFR 4.97 schedule ratings for the respiratory system, because guess what? Um, sleep apnea is in this particular body system. So when you click on the 4.97, it's going to take you, it's going to bring this up. Okay. You're going to come, I'm sorry. Uh, you're going to come to schedule rating, schedule ratings, uh, respiratory system. Okay. And this is broken up. But what we want to do, we want to look for the diagnostic code for sleep apnea. So that four digit code you see there to the left, 6502, that's the diagnostic code for deviated septum. But we need to find the one for sleep apnea. So we're going to scroll down. Keep scrolling. We're going to keep scrolling, keep scrolling. And I want to say it's 6847. So I'm going to test my knowledge here <laughs> to see if I know my diagnostic codes. Okay. 6837 or 6847. One of the two. Okay. But we're going to find out here in a second. All right. So we're going to keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling. 68. So it's not 6837. So it has to be 6847. Let's see, let's see, let's see. There it is. 6847, diagnostic code for sleep apnea uh, syndromes. Okay, obstructive, central, a mix. Now, this tells you or shows you the current criteria. And one thing you want to look for where it says under 50% to the right, what is that criteria? Requires use of breathing assistant device such as a continuous air pressure machine okay CPAP so that's the that's been the cr current criteria for years but they're proposing to change it so I'm link again I'm gonna link the videos that I did uh, at, uh covering the these proposed changes so when you see that video and you look at the new proposed changes, if it looks different than this, then they've implemented. And this is one way you can find out. You come right here and look at the 50% criteria. All this criteria is gonna, they're proposing to change, but you can see just the 50% right now, confirmed by a sleep study, sleep apnea, confirmed by a sleep study, and yet you've been assigned a CPAP machine, it's 50%, okay? So this is the way I look it up, all right? Now, if you go back, if we go back to the rating schedule, okay, let's just go up to the audio, all right? Oh, wait a minute, did I go too far? Yeah, I think I went too far. So you got a muscatorial, organs of special sense, and then you have impairment, auditory acuity. What we're gonna be clicking on, we're gonna look for tinnitus, okay? Because remember, in those videos that I did, they're proposed to remove diagnostic code 6860 tinnitus all together. So if you go and you click on 38 CFR 4.87, that one right there, what you're going to get after you click on it, you're going to get diseases of the ear. And I've already highlighted, I'm sorry, yeah, 62. I say 6860, 6260 tinnitus, 10%. So in that previous video that I'm going to link at the end of this video, it's proposing to remove diagnostic code 6260 altogether. It has to be an underlying condition of something else. OK, but as of right now, it's still the current. You still can be granted 10 percent just for tinnitus alone, but they're proposing to remove it. So this is what I'm doing maybe three or four times a week, at least once on the weekend, Saturday or Sunday, and seeing if they update it because they may not update the M21 immediately, okay? But here I can tell, okay, did the criteria change, all right? And I'm taking this, you know, first thing in the morning, sometimes in the afternoons, just depending on what I have going on throughout the day. But this is a way that you, you the veteran, can track it as well and again, you can sign up for that uh, on the VA's website for the newsletter. 
Okay, so I didn't go into detail about the proposed changes. I'm gonna link, like I said, I'm gonna link those videos to the end of this one. You can go back and you can review it later. But I just wanted to share with you what am I doing to make sure that I'm checking or how I'm checking weekly if they've implemented those new proposed changes. Because I'm getting a lot of phone calls where they're saying, hey, have they implemented it yet? And I'm like, I don't know. Last time I checked, they haven't. But this is one way that you can check, okay? Especially if you're trying to get Service Connect for tinnitus. Sleep apnea on the current uh, criteria, trying to get to 50%. And I didn't show the mental, but I did, excuse me, I did check it and it's still under the current criteria. Now, they may not even implement these proposed changes. Me personally, I think they are, but I could be wrong. That's just me. All right. But we all have to be educated. So I just showed you how you can go, whether, you know, if you don't have anything to do, if you want to do it daily, do it in the at morning and afternoon, lunchtime or whatever or if you just want to check on your lunch break, that's a way that you can check, all right? But you definitely want to make sure you sign up and get those, uh, how to sign up and get those emails when they change like the M21 criteria. I'll link that video at the end of this video as well. I did it in one of my round tables. I walked through, uh, I was sharing my screen on Zoom with the individuals that signed up for one of my previous round tables and I walked them through that, okay? And I was challenging people, hey, I'm doing it now. Get your phone out or iPad or pull it up on your second screen on your desktop and walk through. And as I was doing that, people was like, yep, I went through. I'm signed up. And then in the next round table the following month, they was like, yeah, I'm getting those updates. You know, they were shocked. But as what we're talking about the, today, these proposed changes, this is what you can do. The veteran or if you're a spouse of the veteran to stay up to date to see if this criteria has been implemented, okay? So I hope you found this video educational. If so, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, hit that notification button, and don't forget to share this video. And also, you can follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you.